Welcome back to week eight of the 100 day challenge. This week, the prompt is over water bungalows. It's pretty early in the week for me to be filming this challenge. It's Thursday. Normally, I don't film this challenge until Sunday, but I'm away this weekend and the beginning of next week, so I have to film it today. But if you follow me on social media, you'll probably know that last night and this morning have been a bit stressful. I lost all my footage from October to now that I had been working on editing. I still got the raw stuff mostly on my phone, but there's some stuff I just don't have anymore. And so it's been a stressful few hours. So I don't know that I'm necessarily in the right headspace to be painting these minis, but I just did paint your style. Actually, it's not Thursday, it's Wednesday. I just did paint your style. Uh, and so we're going to do these minis, but we're gonna do them in ink because people have been enjoying the ink ones and I have been enjoying the ink ones. And really, I have no idea what to do for overwater bungalows. It is totally out of my comfort zone. I had to look up what overwater bungalows actually look like. They're up on my laptop. And so this is gonna be an adventure, but I hope you stick around to see how they turn out. All right, we're starting with storied blue because I think it'll give a really nice base, especially if I water it down a bit. So. Water, and then a little bit of blue. More blue than I thought. Well, maybe not. Maybe once it washes out, it'll be okay. So this is the like story blue that's more teal colored. Mm -hmm. We're gonna let that dry down on our base. Then we'll go from there. So it doesn't have a totally flat finish, but I sort of like that more. And now I'm going in with writing desk which is the collaboration with Wonder Pens, which is actually one of my more local pen shops. Now that the brush has been defluffed. Sure. It's like a boardwalk on three sides and a pathway. I 
think writing desk is probably going to be used in every one of these. But it is super cute. I put the lid back on writing desk, but I'm not even bothering to put it back in the box. Next up, we're gonna use Riveting Pond for our water. It's got sort of like a pink color shift to it. It might be too pink, but I think it'll look pretty stunning. It is such a fun color. It might have been their first chrome shifting ink of the year, or maybe it was just the first one that I was interested in personally. It was the first one that I picked up this year that they did. We did it back in, I want to say September. It might have been October. And they released it. Now we're just going to let that dry. All right, we are dry, so it is time for our next little bungalow. Just wetting the same kind of ink so it's dried. Let's do this one. Maybe this one. I'm using, I, well, what I did was I just Googled um, overwater bungalows and I'm just like combining multiple pictures. <laughs> the sort of look I want. There's number two done. Alright, I have a plan. I really like this one that's like, there's a couple that are like two tones. So you've got the C and then you've got the like buildings. And so we're gonna do that. We're gonna use a little bit of dust and green.
so we don't want to get it too dark, but I want it to be like, you can tell that it's the sky. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let's let that dry. All right, it's dry, and we're gonna go in with French Nass Blue. It was part of their Christmas collection. It's got like this crazy shift in it. It's really pretty. And again, we're just gonna go with like a tiny pitch of it. But I am going to pre-wet the page so that my and I've got it on my hand already. I'm going to pre-wet the page because I know from experience that it stains. And I want it not to stain. I do want a lazy line. Maybe it can be sort of easy. Let's see, is it flat? There. Let's let that dry. There. It no longer wants to stick to the desk. I do not care. So. Let's. Sure, that looks like a thatched roof. All right. I would say this week is not my favorite. Let's just go ahead and say that off the top. This week, not my favorite week. Um, yeah. These are a bit more of a struggle than some of the other weeks have been. Alright, let's go back to this blue. Get it out of the box. Ribbiting Pond. I like it. It makes a fun background color to work from. And I, you know, sort of want to have fun with this week. If I don't like the theme or if I'm struggling with the theme, like at least I'm going to have fun with the supplies I'm using. And painting with ink is definitely a having fun with my supplies sort of thing. So 
so let's let that dry. Alright, I sort of feel like going back to the first bungalow design. I really like it. I also think this is the last one I'm going to get out of this pile of, um, ink. That being said, I want to do, like, a round slash oval leaf, I think. Well, it's determined where my path is going. Sort of looks like a weird dandelion. Oh, whatever. Okay, four left. I can, I'm sorry, three left. I can do three more. I have confidence that I can do three more. I am going to get out more brown though. It's officially reached that point. We are replenishing the brown. Alright, this one's going to be quite interesting because I am using Stroke of Midnight and Story of Blue. I'm using Stroke of Midnight for the stars up top. And then I'm going to use Story of Blue for the water underneath. Um, and then I'm just going to hope that the brown, like, sort of silhouettes itself in. That's a word. Stroke of Midnight is one of Mom's absolute favorite inks, but... I don't really use it much. It doesn't often fit what I need. I'm hoping though, like, I can get the right sort of stars with it that I want. I think I should be able to. I didn't realize how sort of not blue it dries. It dries with quite a nice red sheen to it, so I actually think it's sort of perfect for this. For the base, I am doing storied blue, the sort of greenish version, because I think, again, it'll give the right effect of like nighttime water. It's not daytime water, it's like nighttime water. I want it to like come across that this is nighttime. A little bit of bleed. Not bad though. I almost wish they had a silver ink that I could throw in and do like more stars and a moon. They don't currently. Not to say they won't in the future, and I've watered down this brown too much. Um, for the moment, though, 
they do not have a like silver silver they've got their collab with atlas which i guess is sort of silver i don't know i haven't actually seen it in person again dad went to atlas i did not um. I don't know that that's actually showing up on camera. Oh yeah, that's showing up. Bungalow in the night with all the stars. Apparently, I can't do a clean tape pull today, which is unsurprising. Two left. I'm done. All right, well, let's go back to the really pretty teal that we used for one of the bungalows. It's got like the color shift in it. I just think it's really pretty and I'm painting them. <laughs> it's really as simple as that. So I want to paint a bunch of bungalows overhead in different teals. That's what I'm gonna paint this week of this challenge. I wonder what next week is. What's next week? Lighthouses. Oh, I'm excited for next week. Let's let this dry. Alright. I think I like the square one the best. So we're gonna do like another square-ish one. Um... I said square-ish. Let's see what counts as square-ish. All right. Oh, too cheap on that brush. Let's do a big deck on this side. I think it makes sense to have a path on the opposite side from you know the big deck. Number 
number six. One left. Just one left. Alright, we're going a bit extra for this last one, and I am doing a, like, sunset in the background. Am I going to regret this? Probably. But, <laughs> here we go. There's my base that's dusk and bloom. And then I have pink eraser. And I've just gotten a tiny bit on the seal. I don't like hanging. Let's dab it in. that a second and then I'm going to put in some purple. I do mean literally like just a couple seconds because I do want to be working all of this wet. This is Harlequin Dreams. I'm getting a little bit on the cap as well just so that I'm not in this brush in the bowl. If all else fails, just like attack it with a paintbrush until you have sort of a cloud texture. So let's let that dry. For the water, I'm going with my ink charger of storied blue because it's a little more blue than my other one. Like it's just, it's a little bit of a darker blue and that's sort of the vibe I want, whatever aesthetic, whichever term you prefer, like I just want it to be sort of moody, and it has the right moodiness to it. So, now that gets to dry. Here we go. It's dry, so now I get to do a bungalow. sort of like double layer look. And if this was mine, I would also have a 
a teeny tiny lounge chair up on the roof of the lower property. You know, watch the sunset and stuff. So, there we go. There, there is number seven done. Not as bad as I thought it would be. Honestly, I thought they'd be worse. There we go. There are all seven. I think these two are probably my favorite, though I also do really like this one. They've all got like their own personalities to them. I wish I thought of the idea of like adding an actual sky earlier than these two, but they're super cute. Um, and I hadn't considered, like, I don't play around with inks enough to blend them for a sky. I'm so used to doing it with watercolor, but it does work quite well for, like, still getting that, like, cloud effect. So it's an important thing to, like, look at in the future, potentially, for bigger pieces. Because I think I would enjoy playing around with it some more. So, I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, please like and subscribe. Let me know which one's your favorite. I think if I had to choose one, it would probably be this night sky one. I just like love the whole concept of it. And it's so cute. So, thanks for watching.